Sup guys, Heeking here, bringing you a discussion uh, preview video, like in usual. It's been a while since I've done a done a, done a video since what? It's been a few good weeks. I'm I've been exhausted. Okay, working, you know, and life. So, you know, it gets tiring. What are you doing, Loki? What are you doing? Oh my God! What are you attacking? Kilo. So guys, remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, let's get into the topic at hand, and uh, good morning, hope you like my mug there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what can I say, I, I like my anime butts. <laughs> and you want to exit the room, give me a second. I'm not going to open the door if you go out, go on, freeze it. This is what it means to have a cat. Annoyance, 24-7. Anyway guys, this topic is going to be about Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City and the Netflix live action show. So yeah, um, where's the trailer for this movie, right? It's coming out in November. It's coming out in November, literally in two months. Two months? No, we're in October. It's coming out next month, apparently. And still no trailer like what what is what is going on uh, is this movie going to get uh, cancelled is it going to get delayed and is it going to come out next year because uh, there's been no marketing on this film and a lot of people are wondering when the trailer's coming out now i can actually tell you that um a trailer for this movie exists i'm not going to say how i know this because i like to keep things close to the chest but no a trailer for this movie does in fact exist um uh, people have seen it, uh, and it apparently does contain a lot of, well, at least a few things that game fans will love. For example, the uh, famous Resident Evil One zombie encounter that you that you get in the original game, with you know the cutscene where it plays and it's eating Kenneth and it turns around and it's like, <sighs> like that scary moment apparently is recreated. This was also recreated, I believe, in Resident Evil Six at one point, and I think maybe. Maybe Resident Evil 5 as well in a different sort of way. I don't know. They, they always like to do that whole uh, twist turning point where you know something's happening to someone. It's like, are you alright? And then it's like, Rrr. it's like, so they, that's being recreated a few times in the games. But, and apparently the truck crash is also confirmed. Uh, apparently the trailer has a very serious tone. Uh, Lisa Trevor is shown apparently. Um, and maybe some elements from uh, the original game as well, like the dog chasing that apparently is sort of shown in there. But uh, other than that, that's that's really all I know about the trailer. So that that, that it contains, uh, it it has been made, it is there, it is available. But for some reason, they're not releasing it. Um, and that, you know, it's a very big question as to why. Why is this trailer not coming out? Why why is Capcom, or in this case, I guess Constantine Films, keeping this so close to the chest? Because this is supposed to be the start of a new saga of movies, and we're not getting it. Like, what is going on? Like. Excuse the background noise. E yeah, like uh, it's very confusing because like why they why they, it feels like uh, self sabotage at this point. It really does because like you you want this movie to do well and this is going to be the first time that a move that this movie is going to use that a Resident Evil movie is going to use the actual game elements. It's going to focus on the actual game characters. It's combining story elements from Resident Evil One and Two together. It's bringing us the main characters: Chris, Jill, Leon, Claire, and Wesker together in one game in, in one film. And there's no hype. There's no hype on this movie. We've seen we've seen some still shots, some interviews, but that's it. It's like there is no hype with this movie whatsoever. It's it's like it's like uh it's like the production company does not care. Like they don't want to hype this movie up for for whatever reason, and it's very confusing. Which then brings us also to the uh, Netflix uh for show um that one's a doozy. The Netflix show. Which I'm not going to bother with. I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to tell you right now. I didn't like the animated Netflix show that we got. It was terrible. I've seen. I've done a review rant video on that. You guys can see that. Uh, the Netflix live action show I couldn't care about. Because that is not Resident Evil. Uh, for those of you who don't know. The Netflix live action show takes place in an alternative world. Where the events of Raccoon City happened. And then a new Raccoon City is built. And the main character is Wesker. And his two daughters. 
who may or may not actually be his daughters and there's like some sort of present and flashback timeline where we, you know we see the the past relationship with the daughters and Wesker in Raccoon City 2 and then we go to the present timeline which takes place in a post-apocalyptic world now you'd think that this probably ties in with the uh, Paul W.S. Anderson movies right you know the whole post-apocalyptic and stuff uh, but no that's not that's not the bloody case uh, this is its own thing and just everything about this series just just isn't Resident Evil at all. They, they've cast Albert Wesker and he's played by, uh, what's his name, Lance, Lance Reddick, I think. Oh, I, got, I got it right, Reddick, yeah, Lance Reddick. He's played by Lance Reddick, okay? For those of you who don't know who that actor is, he's played a few small roles in shows like Lost and he was in a little, what, like a one minute of screen time in Godzilla vs. Kong. This guy is a good actor. He's a very good actor. Like if you have, you should watch his uh, Toys Are Us short film on YouTube. This dude is demented and scary. Like, and he's really good and funny. But everything I've ever seen him in, he's always been wasted. I think he's in the uh, John Wick uh, movies, where I think that's his best role that he's played so far. Do you know what I mean? At least he's given something to do in those movies. But yeah, he's playing Albert Wesker, and let that sink in. This is a black actor playing a white character. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you're being racist, whatever. No, I'm not being racist, okay? Uh, Albert Wesker is white. He has, you know, he has blonde hair. He's white. He's basically the... Uh... Excuse me. See, this is pissing me off. Christ! I know I'm being a bit aggressive there, but seriously, either come in or don't come in, like, Christ. Anyway, Lance Reddick is playing a white character. For those of you thinking that's, you know, oh, it's racist, you know, like, I'm, I'm complaining because it's... No, I'm complaining because Albert Wesker, by definition, is supposed to be a white male character, okay? He's a very origin, at least from what we found out in Resident Evil 5, is basically a Nazi superior being kind of experiment. And yeah, at least that gives you kind of an idea of what a racist prick, I guess, Oswald E. Spencer was, do you know what I mean? Like the fact that they were trying to do these kind of things. The fact that he got a black actor to play what is essentially a Nazi type character, or at least an it's Nazi inspired character, or a Nazi experiment inspired character, is to me the most racist thing. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the whole thing. All I'm gonna say is, is Imagine what would what the reaction would be if, for example, they had Black Panther, Blade, Storm, be white characters. At that point, you've just you've just ruined the characters because they're not supposed to be white people. That they're, they're, they're black. Okay, that's what makes the characters so individual and so awesome. And what they've done here by making Albert Wesker black and giving him two daughters as well. Like this whole this whole show is basically woke. That, like compared to the reboot movie which has a few issues and I do have issues with the casting um, at, at least the actors seem like they're gonna be good do you know what I mean Loki is being very annoying in the morning right now I mean technically it's it's uh, an early afternoon <laughs> but yeah um, I'm not a fan I'm not a fan of the casting because everything about this is, is just wrong this is not what the Alvaresca character is supposed to be and they're trying to make him be a good guy in this as well with maybe hints of him at be, having done shady crap and that because he still works for Umbrella so I don't know what's going on with this because he's he's basically the main character of this show or at least the doors are supposed to be and he plays like an antagonist maybe oh you know he's, he's a good dad or he's not that I don't know no, like the, the the plot synopsis I read make really make no sense like and it it's not Resident Evil for me and yeah this whole show is just a case of Netflix trying to appeal to the woke crowd like everything about it is just appealing to the woke crowd and I can't see this doing well I really can't and I really really hope it flops I really do because this kind of I'm, I'm just past it at this point. I'm sick and tired of seeing crap like this being done for the sake of diversity or appealing to the world crowd. Like, no, I don't want to see this crap. If you want, if you want to make a show focused on, you know, specifically a black character, give us a give us a character from the games then, or or like do a spin-off film set in the game universe with those characters. You got Josh Stone. You got Sheva Alamar. Make a spin-off about the RPD or, or the fall of the RPD and have Marvin Brannigan be the main character of that show. Like, why not? Do you know what I mean? Like, why do you have to take Albert Wesker and make him black? Hell, since since uh, since the name Wesker was given to him uh, uh, by, you know, the, you know, the name Wesker basically refers to the original head scientist that started off the project. Why not do an origin story about that? The Wesker children and have the original scientist 
be Lance Reddick. Like, he worked with Oswald E. Spencer. He started this whole thing. He is the original Dr. Wesker, and he has these children, and we get to see the origins of Albert and Alex and other characters. You could have done something like that. That would have been actually very interesting, and that would have worked. And you could have explored the sort of the racism or the Nazism that Umbrella and Spencer and uh, Marcus or uh, Ashford, whatever, sort of deluded into. But, like, no, let's just do this, because why not? So yeah, I'm not really happy about that. I'm not really looking forward to that uh, show. And of course, the movie, the movie. Well, we're gonna have to talk about the movie then, won't we? So, Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. For those of you who don't know, there was a leak uh, of this movie, I think, uh, very early on before production started when they were looking for actors uh, and uh, to play these specific characters. And yeah, the story is way, is, is all over the place really. Um, First of all, Leon is not Leon. Uh, they, if, if, if they've kept the same storyline for him, this is not Leon at all. He d he's not Leon in story or character or even appearance-wise, so they've already screwed Leon up. Uh, basically, uh, Leon's character is that he's already working in Raccoon City and his dad used to be this famous cop and he's trying to live up to the mantle of his father. That's the story they've given Leon for this reboot. He's not a guy who's bad on his luck on his first day. You know, this isn't a guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. This isn't a rookie cop. This is someone who has experience being a cop already, who already lives in Raccoon City. And yeah, that's that's what they're going with. So yeah, I'm already not a fan of Leon's plot because it's cliche as hell. It is cliche. It's, it's kind of the thing that they do with a lot of cop drama stories. Oh yeah, your dad used to be this epic cop. Now you gotta live up to, you know, you, now you're living in his shadow and you gotta live up to it. It's like, yeah, that's not Leon. Um, Claire and Chris were both raised in the Umbrella Orphanage. You know, the, the orphanage that's inspired by the orphanage from the Resident Evil 2 remake, uh, where they took kids and they experimented on them. And uh, they befriended Lisa Trevor there. And uh, obviously, Lisa Trevor got taken and experimented on and turned into the monster, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Chris is obviously in stars. Claire is doing her own thing. And uh, yeah, the main monster in this movie is Lisa Trevor, and she's gonna be, she's got this specific connection with Claire because they need to be childhood friends, and she's gonna be chasing her. So Claire is basically reduced to being the Sherry Birkin of the of the movie because you've got the main monster tracking her down and following her. But I don't mind that. I like the sort of connection they build because at least they're going for something emotional. I'm assuming this is gonna be. I'm assuming it's going to be emotional with Claire discovering that this is her childhood friend and trying to figure out what the hell happened, why this happened, and maybe we get some sort of tragic ending. Maybe she's forced to kill her, or maybe Lisa, in, in her final moments, will regain her humanity and protect Claire, and then she dies. Maybe they're basically going to do like a Nemesis 2.0 from Apocalypse, basically. That's what I kind of see them doing with. I don't mind that change. Uh, the rest of the stars characters, Chris, Jill, Wesker and Richard Alkin apparently like uh, I swear they said a, a Rico was gonna be in this no Barry or Rebecca because I think obviously if they were in this they would have been character fodder so they're not in this uh, Wesker in this in this movie apparently works for Ada Wong Ada Wong is his boss so already that's a big major change and apparently he dies at the end of the film only to be resurrected and saved by Ada Wong at the end so yeah major change there i don't know how to feel about that but if it works we'll see how it goes but the idea that uh because this is the thing is ada technically part of umbrella or is west got betraying umbrella and he's actually working for ada wong and plus she's the head of this whatever if they're doing sort of like that then cool but at the same time you're ne you're, ne you're neglecting the relationship that's built between leon and ada which is one of the main things in the games and we're not going to see that apparently so and then you got other characters like Chief Irons and uh, Ben Brutalacci in this as well. Uh, Irons apparently is going to be a bad guy who then ends up turning good after Umbrella betrays him. So he joins forces with the good guys. I don't know if he's going to be a betrayer or not. Uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. Because it sounds like they're combining uh, the uh, original version of Irons and, and the 1.5 Irons where he was a good guy. He was actually a good police chief who was trying to help everyone and he was wounded. And so they're combining those two maybe together. And then, uh, yeah, uh, William Birkins in this. I don't know what role he plays. I don't know how this movie is gonna tie in the uh, the movie, the game one and game two events together because apparently this all takes place at the same time. So you got the mansion incident happening, and you got the Raccoon City four happening, and the RPD stuff happening. So I don't, I don't know how this all comes together. I, I really don't. Like it's very mind-boggling to me. The only thing I can come up with is is that. Uh, during the outbreak in Raccoon City, Leon and Claire will obviously join forces with survivors there, including Irons. Um, they, they escape the RPD to the orphanage where they discover the experiments. We get little flashbacks to when they were kids, maybe. 
and then uh, Lisa obviously reveals herself, attacks them, they escape from the sewers, uh, maybe they find a train or something that leads them to the uh, mansion uh, lab where they then meet with Chris and Jill and, and anyone else that's still alive from the stars, where they discover that this is where the virus came from, this is where the leak happened, blah, blah, blah. Wesker reveals himself as a traitor, stuff goes wrong, blah, 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 and then uh, the characters escape. And in the original uh, leak, apparently, Raccoon City does get nuked. So this movie ends with the heroes escaping Raccoon City and Raccoon City gets nuked. So there's not going to be a Resident Evil 2 adaptation where they're going to encounter William Birkin and have Sherry there and, and Leon and Ada meet. There's not going to be a nemesis being sent in and chasing them through Raccoon City by Umbrella. No. This, mo this movie apparently is going to end with Raccoon City just getting nuked. And, and uh, Jill, Chris, Claire and Leon escaping and Wesker being revived by Ada Wong and setting him up as like a future villain in the, in the, in the next uh, Resident Evil movie or whatever, if they, if they even get a chance to do a sequel. Because the way the, the way the marketing for this movie is going, and no hype around it by the way, I don't see a sequel being greenlit or announced. I can see this movie flopping at the box office very badly because the other movies did really, really well. And there was a lot of marketing behind them, but this one I'm seeing nothing of. So I don't know what the hell the, the end game is with this movie. Because it really does feel like self-sabotage at this point. It really does feel like they don't care and they don't want to do a sequel to this at all. Um, and if they did do a sequel, and if it does have that original ending with Raccoon City getting wiped, then the only logical sequel or direction to go into would be Cold Veronica. And I can see a lot of fans, game fans, just being pissed because, like me personally, I would, I would, I would love to see a Resident Evil 3 adaptation. I would love to see this movie end with, with, with the main heroes stuck in Raccoon City as it's starting to get infested with zombies. And then at the end, Umbrella sort of like whoever's in charge of Umbrella at that top point. If, if William Birkin is even alive, him going send a nemesis in to to kill the witnesses. And then for us, we get the sequel of of of, of these main characters trying to escape and a nemesis chasing them through. And you got the U, U, UBC whatever coming in and having Carlos there and Nikolai is the next bad guy and then that movie ends and then we go into an adaptation of and that this would be this would be basically an adaptation of Resident Evil 2 and 3 because you'd have Ada there involved as well maybe maybe have Sherry there they find her and you get William involved and he gets killed off whatever or maybe he turns into G at the end and he fights he fights a nemesis imagine if we get something like that where we get G and a nemesis fighting it out and in that movie, that story ends, and then the next one will be called Veronica. It will be an adaptation of called Veronica, where maybe the characters get captured, maybe some of them get captured, maybe Claire and Leon get captured, and they get sent to Rockford Island. And then you've got Chris and Jill, whatever, who survive, or with anyone else, and they have to try and figure out how to how to find this island and get them back. And then you deal with the whole Ashford stuff, and then you've got your perfect Raccoon City slash Stars trilogy. And then the next movie after that would basically be an adaptation of Fall of Umbrella or Resident Evil 4 and 5 and so on. And there you go, like, uh, you have you have the material there to do this, to make this work. But it just doesn't seem like these guys want to do it. And it's very sad to hear that, to see that happening. Uh, man, this coffee tastes like shit. <laughs> Sorry, it really does. Um, which is ironic, actually, considering the, 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 mark, the pictures here. So, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not excited. I'm not excited for this movie at all. I know it's gonna be bad. Here's the thing. I know this is gonna be bad. Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting told like, oh, you, 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 you seem like you're very hyped for this. I'm not. I'm not hyped for this movie. I'm hyped for the idea of seeing something that will attempt to use the game elements and actually try and tell a proper adaptation of those games. And seeing how they go about doing it without having to use a made-up character like Alex, for example. But, uh, and that's what I'm excited for, but I know that deep down overall this movie is gonna be a pile of crap. I mean, if it ends up actually being really good as a game adaptation, that's gonna be shocking. And it's very, very surprising, but I don't have any real hype for this. And, uh, the, the lack of marketing is making it even more for me where it's like, I really don't care now at this point, and I wanna care. But they're doing it in a way where I don't care. So yeah, it's really sad and upsetting to see it see it done that way. But there you go. That's that's what it is. And I don't know why they're doing that. But yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on this. Um, the trailer, like I said, should be with us very soon. It should be with us this month. Sometime, I'm assuming. I'm assuming at this point because I was honest. I honestly thought it would be with us this week, Tuesday. It didn't come. So I'm assuming next week, maybe or the week after that. 
Probably a month before the film comes out. I'm assuming they're gonna have this trailer come out a month before this film I mean, let's see when exactly this film comes out um, And the release date for this oh Oh, is this the release date for this now? My bad guys this movie comes out in December 3rd now Apparently that this the release date for this has changed because I remember this was November so so December 3rd So we got two months then okay, we got two months which means the trailer could be with us at the end of this month to maybe around Halloween time to sort of hype us up or it's going to come out next month uh, which would be ridiculous because if they really want to market this movie now and really get the hype rolling we need the marketing to start now like now because yeah it's it's getting close it's getting really close but we'll see we'll see what happens when it when it happens do you know what I mean um, yeah Anyway, guys, that's that's that for that. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Remember to take care and uh, goodbye.